Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. I'm Julia Daniel Valan, and this is a Sai Harbor Cinema Conversation. This conversation is organized in collaboration with uh, with Cinema Tropical, and our guests today are Clever Mendonça Filio and Giuliano Dornelis. And uh, we are showing uh, on our virtual cinema. You can see their uh, last the last collaboration, Baccarat, which they co-directed, and also uh, an earlier film that uh, Clever directed, and uh, Giuliano was a production designer, and it's Neighboring Sounds. And I'm gonna leave you to with Mary Jane uh, Marquesiano, who's the director of special project of Cinema Tropical, and has uh, working on us on this uh, great conversation. Mary Jane. <laughs> great, thank you, Julia. Well, Cinema Tropical is celebrating its 20th anniversary and as we look forward to the future, we're so excited with our collaboration with the Sag Harbor Cinema and with Julia and, and her team. Over these last 20 years, Cinema Tropical has created a community with Latin America's most talented filmmakers. And we're so excited to have two of our favorites with us uh, today, Claybor Mendoza Filio and Juliana Dornell. In New York City, their films are always a cause for celebration. Beginning with Claybor's debut film, Neighboring Sounds in 2012 at New Director's New Films, followed by his New York Film Festival premiere of Aquarius in 2016. And recently at the most electric of premieres, co-directors Kleber and Giuliano presented Bacurao at the 2019 New York Film Festival. Congratu congratulations Kleber and Giuliano on this well-deserved success. The number of awards the film has already garnered and its presence on literally every 2020 best film list of, is truly impressive. So thank you for joining us in Sag Harbor and thank you to the film distributors, Kino Lorber for Bacurau and Cinema Guild for Neighboring Sounds. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, okay, um, I, uh, you've been collaborating for about 18 years and Bacurau, uh, it, it, it's, it's been a 10 year process uh, for, for you. I understand that the, the, the film was born of a, a desire to um, react to a certain uh, representation, uh, you know, as, as, of, of, of uh, remote communities in, in, in Brazil, you know, from the standpoint of documentary and, 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 and social realism, as well as um, um, a desire to see more genre within the, you know, the film production in, in Brazil. Can you tell me about this, this process and this, this two uh, tension that the film was born of? Clever, you start. Um, yeah, yeah, well, first of all, I have to thank uh, Sag Harbor Cinema and Cinema Tropical for putting this together. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to talk about film um, this film particularly took us almost 10 years and that should not sound dramatic because we were, you know, developing other projects and, and living our lives and, and that's how it, it worked. Uh, we, we were at a film festival back in 2009 with a short film uh, called Tropics. Uh, the reaction to that film was quite passionate and, and strong at the festival and, and that got us in a got us thinking about um, making another genre film because Cold Tropics is a sci-fi-ish 25 minute um, short film and uh, it also happened that at the same festival we sat down to watch a lot of other films and 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 we happened to catch uh, four documentaries, Brazilian documentaries. And um, these films got us thinking because they were, they usually follow the same path. Um, an urban film crew going to uh, some faraway place, uh, looking at some remote community. And, and I think some of them were well-meaning well-meaning is probably one of the worst things that anybody could say about a film, I think. Um, but they were well-meaning and, uh, and they tried to discuss, you know, issues of, of representation. And, but still, they, 
seem to us to be very problematic. Um, I should also point out that we, me and Juliana, we come from the northeast, the northeast of Brazil. The northeast of Brazil is separate, separated by an, an, in, an invisible line, which basically comes from the way the country was put together historically. So we have our own peculiar accent. All the money was um, organized in the southeast of Brazil. And, and, and there are many issues that we can, that we could spend hours uh, discussing about this this divide that exists in the country. And, and, and I think that makes us particularly sensitive to some of the problems that we identify in Brazilian media, you know, journalism and um, uh, uh, telenovelas and, and Brazilian films also, every time they, they, they focus on the Northeast. So I think Bacurau really came from this desire to to make a film about a, 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 commun a community and, and each and every character in that community would be just great people, people we love, people we, 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 we would want to put on, on the screen and, and develop a film with them and they would be the classic heroes. Um, and also it would be a film we would love to see as cinephiles. You know, it would be a Brazilian film through and through, but it would never deny all the films that made us want to make films. And that, of course, uh, includes uh, you know classic American cinema and Australian cinema from the '70s, and and of course uh, Corbucci and Leone from Italy, and and and. All of that together um, is, I think, what Bakurao is. Now, of course, when we discussed a lot of this, but it's, of course, it's very easy to use the benefit of hindsight and, and give you all that information. But, but I, I, I think, uh, I, I hope uh, I, I gave you a, a more or less accurate uh, account of what we, uh, what, what, of what we did uh, over a period of almost 10 years. Also, I should point out that Bacurau was supposed to be my second film, but then Aquarius um, just happened to, uh, um, to come in and, and it so happened that Bacurau became the third film. Juliana, you wanna add something? Well, uh, I think Weber gave a very good perspective about creation process, but uh, yeah, I, 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 I only to add uh, that throughout the years, uh, we, we changed uh, the star film and we, we were very connected to, to the real world and to the present day. So after nine years, we had the, this opportunity to use uh, many ideas that we collected uh, and we cat cataloged uh, during this, all this time. And I think uh, this, this is one thing. And the, the other thing is that we uh, aimed a lot in, in the history of our country and our region and, and the cultural history also as something that should be portrayed in a different uh, and more we we we, we tried uh, to be uh, very honest with everything and and very i don't know uh we, we tried to be honest and we tried to just uh, just talk about our country and talk about uh, the no uh, northeastern uh, uh, culture and and yes, uh, it was great to have this long time to to think about this to figure it out and, and uh, this film is uh, always uh, 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 we're supposed to to be a film about a community and this was uh, a big challenge because. I think I suspect that is that is easier 
to write about fewer uh, main characters. Uh, the, we had a lot of work to, to, to try to balance and to, to give uh, uh, one, uh, one, to give uh, a good, uh, a good presence for any, every character that we uh, create and that's it. Uh, you, you, you reminded me of something. Uh, the film was done over a period of 10 years and, and Brazil changed uh, a lot during these 10 years. Yes. Uh, I, I just released a, a book with my scripts and, and, and one thing that I wrote in the introduction was, uh, if you look at neighboring sounds, Aquarius and, and Bacurau, there is a, 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 the, the tone is, becomes uh, increasingly louder. Um, and I think that's exactly what happened uh, in this country uh, um, over the last 10 years. And, um, and I think somehow the, the films are um, strange, um, <laughs> strange uh, reflections of what we feel, uh, of what I feel the country is now in terms of energy and the general vibe of the nation. You said that you, you with uh, Bacurau, you wanted to make um, um, a film about people you like, you know, uh, the, the, the characters are, are incredible. They have a, um, an archetypical, you know, they're, they, to a certain extent, they are archetypes, but they also feel very real. I'm wondering how did you find them? Were, were these archetypes of the local culture or the, there is a component that came from the people you met while you were casting because most of them are non-actors? I think there is a bit of, of everything. There's, there's uh, uh, archetypes, uh, classical archetypes from the literature, from the, uh, the comic books, from also the, the films and, and the theater. And, but uh, but we, we, we were very open uh, uh, to, to just uh, to receive from uh, the people that uh, worked as actors, uh, their their own life experience, their their own personalities. And, and for example, Lunga was a, a, a collective creation uh, between me, Kleber, and, and the actor Silvero uh, Silvero Pereira. And uh, I think uh, this this is this is something that we always uh, like to do in our films since the beginning. Uh, because just to just to have more uh, complexity and, and, and to be open, because the, the, those those ideas, uh, those, uh, uh, those the way that we like to, 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 to see a film is I don't know maybe to not understand uh, completely the characters, and I think this kind of uh, approach uh, helps a lot uh, uh, yeah um we we were very lucky because uh, we had a we had a long time to find people and once we defined where the location would be we um we had a great people working uh, to find uh, actors and 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 actors who normally in, in another film would be treated as extras, but we, we always thought that the extras would be actors in the film. Even if an eight-year-old boy or, or a 90-year-old uh, man. And, um, and, and something happened. Uh, we had these amazing faces and, 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 and they brought a lot of truth to the film. And, and towards the end of the shoot, uh, one of our you know, one of the great people who worked with them, uh, she just casually told me that uh, the people who answered the, the, the audition, the, the, the invitation to audition for the film in, in, in so many different communities in the region, they were actually the outcasts in each of their places. Uh, you know, the poets and the gay people and the trans people and the artists, the ones who are seen as a little bit crazy. And these, these amazing people are the people who came to work with us. And, and that was, 
uh, it, it was such an emotional moment after an, a very emotional shoot. Um, and, and, and it really, I think it really explains a lot of, of, of how the process of making this film um, happened. Uh, we, we really like and respect. I mean, we, we created scenes on the fly just to have somebody we loved uh, come, come again and, and do another scene for the film because he is so real and so honest. Uh, there was a guy who um, he, he catches uh, Udo's character in the end. He, he wears a hat. And after he shot the scene, he said, to, he came to us and said, I feel avenged in a way because my grandfather went to Italy in the Second World War and he died in Italy fighting the Germans. And now I got to, uh, to fight a German in the film. And, and, uh, and it's just one of the crazy stories that happened uh, during the shoot of Bacurau. Uh, your your other film that we are showing in the virtual cinema, Clever, uh, uh, Neighboring Sound, is also um, 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 a film with multiple characters and and multiple narrative. What is what do you like about this 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 type of storytelling? Um, somehow, I think uh, even as I'm even as I'm writing the script, I I think a lot about what Robert Altman did. Uh, just uh, panning the camera to another set of characters and, and you can still hear the other ones speaking and then you go back and he pans back to the left. Uh, it usually shoots uh, anamorphic panavision and he gets as many people in as possible. So that's one image that, that sometimes I, I think about and I did think a lot about that in uh, neighboring stops. And it seemed to come back in Bacurau, but. I think the main challenge is, is like Giuliano said, to to make everyone, <laughs> to make everyone uh, stand out. I mean, we have a little kid who says, uh, "People," and everybody. I mean, he became a meme in Brazil, and and people remember him because what he says is so truthful. And and of course, we have also Sonia Braga on doing her thing and being amazing, but then we also have uh, other characters who have small parts, like the girl who has a hangover in the, begin in the beginning of the film. We just love the way she acted and the way she, her demeanor and her face, and, and, and then she's in a scene with Sonia Braga and everybody remembers that scene. Or, so... One thing, one thing I, I, I think it's it's nice to say is that the people from that place they never appear to be uh, intimidated yeah. by our uh, circus in, in that village. They just blended with us uh, very quickly, and they are so they they. They could, uh, as Galeguinho, the, the guy that talked about his uh, grandfather, uh, we had other stories like that. And they, they understood uh, the film that we wanted to do so quickly. And uh, they, they could relate to, to many, many things that happened to, to, to them in, in their past. And uh, yes, uh, uh, well, this is this is this was uh, a, a not a big surprise for me, but at the same time, I never expected personally. I never expected that would be so so. Uh, you know, they they understood everything. So so, it was so beautiful, and and, uh, and the way the way we we re, we established our relationship with them also contributed a lot because uh, happens many times when a, when a film crew uh, goes to, to a place like that, they, they behave in a very, uh, not, in, a, in a not good uh, uh, kind of behavior. They, they, they go like, uh, they, they just go there, they do their thing and they spend uh, a lot of money and they, 
behave like they are the bosses and stuff like that. And this is very destructive sometimes, most of the time. And we, we never did like that. We, we just uh, created, uh, we, we, we thought a lot before go there to make the film. We were very concerned about this kind of destructive uh, uh, presence that we could have. And we took a lot of care and, and we respect them uh, since the beginning. And we established this, this relationship with affection and, and, and a lot of affection and respect. And I, I, and I believe this kind of thing uh, changes everything. Uh, it's, it's I have completely, a question in the chat. Powerful. I have a question in the chat to this to this point, and, and Ralph Gibson is asking, I would be curious to know if the villagers in Bacurau had read the script or knew the storyline as they performed. I don't, I think most, I, I don't think they were given the script, but they were very, we were very careful to explain the storyline and even to explain that some moments in the film would be extremely violent. And that was part of the conversation. And they understood that they were making a film with some, some of them saw it as an adventure film. Some of them saw it as a documentary about the history of the region because uh, the Brazilian outback has its own history of violence. So people understand that. Uh, the problem with the water is a, is a collective trauma in, in, in the Brazilian outback, particularly in the, in the Northeast. So if you mention water, water is part of the film, uh, they, will, they, they, they understand it uh, instantly. So the, the conversation was always very open, very honest. And, uh, there were, I think, a couple of scenes, particularly around the museum, uh, when Lunga reacts and becomes uh, savagely violent, that was something that was discussed. Today, we're going to have a, a, a pretty strong scene. But of course, they were all part of the game. They saw the heads, they saw the fake blood, and uh, everything was, was explained to them in a very open way. And, uh, and they loved it. I, I, one of the things that makes the film so uh, stunningly um, unique is the, are the tonal shift. You know, it starts with this woman going back to what we think her village. She's bringing medicine. She's bringing thing. You know, and then there are coffins, and they're like, wait a minute, why there are coffins? And then after a while, it becomes sort of sci-fi. You know, there is a drone that looks like a you know, a Martian thing. And then, you know, and then there is the main street is a Western thing. You know, I recognize a lot of Italian Western uh, settings. And, and then it becomes, you know, more like a horror film. Can you just talk about this, this sort of this constant shift of, 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 of the film where you go between realism and then, and then like explicit genre, uh, uh, it's interesting because uh, now the, you know, the film has been out for almost two years. We premiered in Cannes in 2019 and, and, and it has become a part of the, the text, the, the conversation around the film about the shifts in, in, in tone. And the, but I think when we were writing the script, we were just, uh, we were just going where the story would take us. And for each new idea, because when you're writing a script, I'm writing a new script now and, and I keep thinking about this. Sometimes you have a good idea, but to make that idea work, you have to fix five or six other problems to make that good idea work. Um, so just to give you um, an idea, uh, I, we did not want to just cut from the community to the invaders. We, we wanted to find a way to almost physically take the film and the viewer to the invaders. And, and, and for that, we, we would need um, two or three interesting scenes which would eventually take us to the compound where they are um, plotting against the community. Um, so I think um, 
I think slowly, mm -hmm. I, I think it also comes from our uh, understanding that Brazilian cinema has a, a problem with genre. So if we began the film, let's say the first 40 minutes in a more naturalistic way, we would, you know, bring in the whole notion of Brazilian cinema and slowly we begin almost like a seismographer, you know, it, it, uh, it, it begins kind of in a flat lining like this and then slowly you begin to see that there is a problem and and I think that's how we we did discuss this me and Juliano the whole idea of the seismographer and it begins to go crazy towards the end and but but of course when you build craziness it has to be built from from the beginning um, I can think of this I think it's a it's a masterpiece um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre it's only 88 minutes. And if you really look at it, uh, it, it does have this atmosphere of dread all the time. But if you look at the last 25 minutes, <laughs> that's, that's when people really want to run and, and use the, the fire escape and, and escape from the cinema. And, and I really, uh, we really love the, this idea, which is incredibly unfashionable these days too really begin the film from the beginning and and then really say be just be a little patient don't don't look at your cell phone uh be a little patient because slowly <laughs> we will get to 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 you know to the good stuff although we think the good stuff is 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 all the way from the beginning of the film you mentioned the texas chainsaw massacre and then you have in the film, uh, a piece of music by John Carpenter, and uh, and also before you mentioned Corbucci, both the Italian directors of you know westerns in the '60s and uh, the filmmaker of the generation, you know Carpenter generation, do believe that genre can be used uh, in a I, I would quote, quote unquote political way that you know it, it can be used to discuss contemporary lives in a very uh, in deep in deep ways. I'm assuming you agree with that uh, point of view. Oh yeah, oh yes. <laughs> In fact, uh, remember, Juliano, we. I mean, that's every time... how I like the film. So it's impossible uh, just to see a horror film without. Uh, without yeah. Every, every time stuff. we 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 got stuck uh, writing the script, we would go downstairs and, and and pick a film and and watch it. And one of the films we saw was Compañeros by Corbucci. Uh, from 1970, and it, that that film had a a big impact on what we were doing because it, it, it's a western. Um, it's a, it's what's known as a spaghetti western, um, but it's really it's very much a film from 1970. <laughs> it it really looked like uh, it was it was the result of everything that was happening, and 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 we liked that. Um, we like that very, very much. And the other thing is, I mean, of course, I love uh, Hollywood westerns, you know, the classic westerns, you know, Ford and and Hawks and and Peckinpah, of course. But when we look at the Italians, they are rougher, <laughs> they are um, grittier and dirtier and more and grainier, and the violence is uglier and 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 I, 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 we, we really wanted that for the film, you know, as much as I, 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 I love all the uh, classic American westerns, and, but the Italians were like a very kind of very aggressive in a way. I have a question uh, that, uh, as a follow-up from, from, from the audience, it's from Mary Jane. Did you ever imagine that the over-the-top acted out militia violence would prefigure reality? I think it actually comes from from reality in many ways, um, uh, but but of course now I mean the, just this week uh, the Brazilian president, you know, instead of concentrating on vaccination, he he submitted uh, six executive orders, uh, making it easier for people to buy firearms uh, in this country. So maybe that's 
one idea that Mary Jane is is thinking about. But uh, but of course, I think the history of violence in in Brazil in the United States um, has has been around for a long, long time, and 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 I think the film feeds on that piece of history, the whole idea of the history of violence in our in our culture. I have a question from completely different nature from Lawrence. Can you talk about your relationship with Sonia Braga? She's, in total, she's a totally different character than in Aquarius, yet the characters have some similarities. How did she and you prepare for the role of, the role of Domingas? Um, I, I was, I mean, me and Juliana were very happy and proud to send a script to Sonia after she did Aquarius, where she would be a very different character, uh, even the way she looks. And she was completely into it, of course. Uh, she found it very exciting. She, she began to, to do exercises with her voice um, as if Dominguez had been a smoker for 55 years and, and, and a very tough woman from the the, the the outback in, in 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 the northeast and and I think she she loved it and and also the fact that this is an ensemble it's not Aquarius anymore where she's uh, running the show which I I also love you know one films where the main character is in every scene and, and that's what I did in Aquarius but in this one uh, she's part of this community and and she understood that she would have uh, great scenes you know her scene with Udo Kier is is a scene that we we like very much and and her tantrum at the funeral of her best friend uh, that's another very challenging scene because it's the first time that anybody sees Sonia in the film and and she's she's like uh, in her own words she's like a witch and um, I think actors love these challenges. The actors love, the very intelligent ones uh, love to surprise people. Um, and I think uh, that's, that's how Sonia reacted to the script. She, she said, I think uh, this is gonna be surprising and, and I like it. I, I don't think it would be as interesting if I had sent her the script for Aquarius 2. Speaking of, speaking of surprises, were you surprised that the film has, it, it opened in Brazil in 2019 and uh, it, it has since, it keeps playing and it has since become more than, a, it's, it's, it's kind of a cultural phenomenon as, as we were talking before getting on, you know, live. It's almost like uh, from all over the world, there are ways to project yourself into, in, 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 into the film. Um, were you surprised and, and why do you think this film has hit the zeitgeist so much? Uh, well, surprised we, we definitely are a lot. Uh, we never expected uh, a film to, to be a success and not, especially not this way, in this particular way, but what I think is uh, uh, that's there's, there's this there's this moment in the world that people are afraid of many things and feeling uh, invaded in many ways, feeling violent, uh, uh, harassed, and and this film uh, they, they it, it this film uh, works with uh, catharsis and, and uh, sometimes. Uh, Catharsis is, uh, is something that people are willing to, to, to feel watching watching films. I I, I have nothing against uh, catharsis, and, and I, we, me and Kleber we saw we saw people uh, screaming at the, the at the in the screenings of the film in many places, but in Brazil. Uh, it looked like, uh, I don't know, maybe a football stadium. And uh, it was crazy. And, and this is difficult to, to explain and to, to understand, but it's not that difficult. But uh, I, I wouldn't, 
I don't know. Uh, it, yeah, I, I think it's about the moment. We are, we are, yeah, that's it. Uh, and and, uh, and this, this uh, situation, it's only getting worse here. And this, this kind of reminds people that this film in some, in some way alerted uh, for some uh, things that are actually happening. But, uh, and, and, the, and the people started to, to think that we are sightseers or something like that, but we are not. We're just uh, uh, talking about uh, history and these this, uh, historical mistakes that are being uh, repeated everywhere. And just look, just look at uh, Germany in the 30s and many other stories like that. So, yeah. I don't know what to say anymore. Um, I have a question from from Clever. Did you want to add something, or I was I was interrupting you? Uh, I, I I I it was a t I I had something. It was at the tip of my tongue, and then it, 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 it's okay. gone. Okay. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I have a question from Wendy. Uh, will you keep your concentration on Brazil's northeast, or will you go further afield? I, I'm well. As for myself, I'm very open to developing uh, new stories and new films, uh, basically anywhere. But but I happen to come from from Brazil, and I happen to live here, and and I'm of course fascinated. I'm I'm my mother was a historian, and I don't know. I'm I I really look at um, history as as. Um, as an endless source of uh, inspiration for for writing stories, and 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 they happen to to be set um, in this in this uh, particular region. What I was what I what I was trying to remember um, just now is that, uh, of course, the Brazilian film industry is being uh, attacked and and basically. Uh, destroyed uh, over the last five years and, and, and more violently over the last uh, two years. So the success of- This is because of the lack of funds, the, uh, the withdrawal funds from the, from, from the yeah. part of the government? Yeah, not only that, but also, uh, uh, you know, attacks against uh, artists and producers and, 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 and the success of Bacurau, it almost felt like an embarrassment for the for the current government, and 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 also um, there was a thing in in Brazil, which of course we have the the Brazilian success of Bacurau, but of course every time that something happens uh, abroad, uh, it has uh, quite an impact on on the on the morale of of so many people who who work in this industry. We have about three hundred thousand technicians, artists uh, working on television and cinema and. And right now, uh, it, it's a very difficult and sad uh, situation, the likes of which I, I never thought that I would witness. Uh, I've been working for the last 15 years, and, and we were building a very healthy uh, industry and incredibly diverse. You know, that's a very important thing. We began to see films coming from all different areas of Brazil and, and being about so many different things. Um, I think Bacurau is 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 uh, is one of these films, and 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 yeah, and this is something else that's happening, and and the success of Bacurau is is also interesting to look from from that from that side. I have a question from. Go ahead. Your your sound. And let's not forget about uh, uh, the size of the, the film industry in Brazil. It was uh, uh, a lot bigger in the in the past uh, 15, 20 years, and uh, three, uh, about uh, three three hundred thousand people uh, were actually working in the film industry in Brazil. We are bigger, maybe bigger than the pharmaceutical industry. And how, how, how a government uh, uh, think that uh, it's something good uh, for the country to destroy an industry 
this this uh, this size. So this is this is completely crazy and cruel. It's just uh, he he. He established uh, an, an idea that uh, the artists were uh, were uh, bums or drug addicts, or, and uh, they, they they just uh, they they are going uh, they are trying to destroy it, and they almost uh, we are almost destroyed. A lot of people are uh, having to change their, their, their professions now. Because uh, the film industry in Brazil still depends a lot, uh, a lot of the government. So I just want to say that compliment. Uh, I, I have a question from a film student named John. Uh, as the twists keep coming and the genre keeps evolving, what choices did you make about the style of shots to help shift the tone? That's a very interesting question. Um... I remember one important decision. I mean, it, it, it started as an idea. And then as we got closer to, to the shoot, uh, it became a, a practical, logistical, and, and, and budgetary thing. We, we really wanted to shoot the film with Panavision lenses because I really believe that they have a very particular look. Um, they look a very, they, they look, um, when you when you, um, you you look at Panavision, um, you think of I don't know you think of Raiders of the Lost Ark and you think of you know classic uh, American filmmaking, which I, we believed it would generate some an interesting tension between the image and and the story and the setting, and so that was one thing that came in very handy once the the shift in genre and the film actually became. A, it pulled out its mask and, and it became a, a, an action or something resembling a, an action, uh, film, a Brazilian action film, but which fed on, on classic uh, American and Italian, Australian uh, genre cinema. So that was one thing that we really fought to, to bring to the film, even if it cost uh, a little bit more, but it was uh, it was a great experience shooting with those lenses, and each lens is is uh, is unique. Each lens is is almost like, um, I mean, they are numbered, and and you can actually see which films uh, were shot with those uh, uh, lens, and and that becomes part of the I image in the film, and and I think it also helps uh, create this this um, melange, this uh, mix of um, of styles which which keep coming back uh, as a reaction to the film, but but I really think that, for example, in the to answer the question more specifically, the the question around the the Damiano's uh, house, where uh, he reacts, it, it's the first um, it's the first re violent reaction from the, from the community in the film. That sequence, I think the film suddenly becomes something else with the overhead shots and the crane shots and, and, and the fast cutting. Uh, um, and of course, with the special effects, which many, many people in, in you know, the Brazilian audience did not expect to see those kinds of um, effects uh, in that particular film. So that was something that I think we, we really... We worked a lot to get that right. Uh, it's, but, we, we, we never wanted to use a handheld camera or a steady cam. We, we established this, this, uh, this uh, how can I say? We only use tracks and cranes. And I think this is something to, to be put in, uh, in the same uh, package of the Panavision lenses, uh, yep. but uh, at the, at, in this moment, uh, uh, now as we speak, I, I, I think uh, uh, no no other Brazilian film uh, has a, has ever used uh, Panavision's uh, C series lenses, anamorphic Panavision C series lenses, in our history. 
And we always uh, were very curious about uh, how the image would look with our sun that is very harsh and very strong. The shadows are, are very black. And uh, it was uh, mo another concept that uh, is completely uh, engaged to, to the concept of the film about collision of two cultures, two uh, things very uh, uh, that uh, are oppose, opposing. So yeah, the, uh, the, the, the result of it, uh, we never, we would never uh, know, uh, but uh, the concept and the, and the proposition we, we had since the beginning and, and the result is fantastic for us because all, all the things that we suspected uh, were confirmed in the end. So we are very happy with the, those results. Right, Kleber? Yes. And I, I hadn't thought of it, but now that you mentioned, the Panavision also works as a unifying aesthetic, you know, aesthetic through through the through the through the genre and sort of heightens that mythical quality that that that, 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 the that, mythical, underscores, the, that underscores the film. The, the mythical quality of of cinema, I think, um, which is exactly where I want to find myself uh, when I when I look at a film. Of course, I also love and enjoy and have fallen in love with many documentaries and many films which use a, a, a kind of um, you know super realism. Um, but what I have been doing in my films, from Neighboring Sounds and Aquarius and, and Bacurau. And of course, in Bacurau, I found uh, a soulmate uh, who, and then we share uh, the same approach. Uh, I think films should look like films. Um, Aquarius, for example, I could, have, I could have shot Aquarius handheld all the time in 166, very kitchen sink uh, kind of approach, which is possible. Um, we had a, 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 an amazing impact uh, over the last 20 years by the Dahden uh, brothers and their great filmmakers. And I remember when Rosetta came out in 1999, it was my first year as a critic in, at the Cannes Film Festival. And, uh, and the impact uh, Rosetta had uh, on so many filmmakers and so many filmmakers who make short films and, and uh, feature films and, and the handheld approach and and the back of the head and yeah that's that's fine and and they made it work beautifully but i think i really wanted uh, you know the the widescreen and you know I, and i keep thinking of course about uh, john carpenter an american the american filmmaker uh, carpenter for me is is a very interesting case because i i will never forget christmas uh, 1981, I went with my mother to see Raiders of the Lost Ark in the most amazing uh, movie palace uh, in Hesithi at the time. And it was an incredible screening, um, unforgettable film going experience. But Raiders of the Lost Ark did not make me want to make films because for me, as a Brazilian 13 year old, it felt like uh, this is so spectacular and expensive. I'll never do anything like that in my life. I was, I was already thinking about, um, you know, making films. But when I saw Carpenter's films, you know, like Halloween and Assault on Precinct 13 and The Fog, I thought this is so incredible because it feels like the scale. I mean, I, I could maybe with a little bit of money do something like that, you know, not something as good as those films but something in the vicinity of that kind of thing so i think um and and he always shoots uh panavision and and he, he gives it uh this film look i mean you're watching a you're watching a movie you know this is a movie it's not a documentary um and uh and i think that's what we've been trying to do and bakura was definitely uh a situation like that. We wanted to uh, to bring you a film, uh, a film from cinema. I think we have time for one more, and it is from Maria. Uh, will there be a sequel of uh, <laughs> Bacurau, or are we going to see those characters again? 
I hope so. We are discussing it, right, Clever? Yeah, what happens, I mean, <laughs> for the first, I mean, for the first time, uh, what happens is uh, you make a film, not only the, the process of making the film was, was uh, very special from all aspects, but then you get the reaction to the film and then you begin to think about the region and, and, and some of the possibilities of developing some other story and then you are now into sequel territory and 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 yeah we we've been playing with a few ideas it's a little early i think uh, to to discuss as, it, as but... cinephiles we never uh, like to too much this idea of uh, making sequels because uh, i think 90 98% of the, the the sequels uh, are not good i can count in one hand maybe the good second sequels. mad max is it's pretty good. Yeah, of course. It, it would be great. it would be the first or the second, uh, the Godfather, and, you know. Right. And uh, yeah, but uh, but at the same time, Kleber uh, uh, always remember this uh, in those uh, in this kind of uh, Q and A's, uh, and we when we went to that village to screen the film for three thousand people from the region, and we. Uh, we went inside the van and we started to see those landscapes and then we got off the, the van and we we saw everybody again and we felt uh, uh, strange and powerful energy to maybe maybe go back and, and do something more do, do something again with everybody because it was a spectacular experience for for everybody and uh, we are still talking to those people we are still talking to to the cast we have a whatsapp group with all the cast and they are all every day sending messages and naming it's a great and, it's a great group actually. yeah but yeah so it, we 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 are very very close uh, to this uh, to this uh, feeling of to you know to to to, to repeat uh, this this kind of uh, good drug that would go the feel of some uh, powerful drug that we felt the, so, the big question of course which goes for any new project is do we have anything to say you know yeah 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 that's that's the big question but but there are so many characters you'd yes. like to you know one would like to to explore well yes. I, I think I would like to leave our audience with the image of the 3,000 people that you know came to see your film when you brought it to them. Oh, that's and, wonderful. Uh, I really want to thank you for, uh, for having joined us. I hope uh, uh, you will be coming to Sag Harbor in person uh, yes. with the next project or with a retrospective. And uh, thank you. Thank you again to both. Thank you, Julia. Best. It was a real pleasure. It was Bye. a pleasure and all the best for Sag Harbor. I hope you open soon, reopen soon. And all the best for the Brazilian film industry to, uh, you know, just keep fighting and come back. We'll pass. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.